Welcome to Red Eyes Creations Radio. My name is Henrik Palmgren. This is Internet Talk Radio, recorded from the west coast of Sweden. I am the editor of RedEyesCreations.com, a website dedicated to news, research, and we also do this radio show, of course. We have a new program available for you every Thursday and Sunday. Interviews with interesting guests, researchers, authors on new and old subjects. Take it or leave it. It's all free stuff for you there to enjoy and consider. We also have a subscriber section with even more radio shows available for you guys who want to have a little bit more each week. And this is what makes it possible for us to keep going and keep up the work that we do here. Today we have a very interesting program lined up for you. We have author, researcher Joseph P. Farrell with us on the line. And uh, Joseph is behind Reich of the Black Sun, the SS Brotherhood of the Bell. He's also behind a three-part book series called The Giza Death Star, The Giza Death Star Deployed and The Giza Death Star Destroyed. And uh, I hope to spend some time on those uh, last three mentioned books in the next segment. A lot of interesting stuff lined up today. Joseph's website, by the way, that you need to check out is gisadeathstar.com, where you can follow along in his, in his blog and uh, much more. Uh, and I do want to spend some time in this first segment to talk a little bit about Joseph, of course, his background, research, and uh, dive into his books, Reich of the Black Sun and SS Brotherhood of the Bell. So with that, it's a pleasure to uh, welcome to the program Joseph P. Farrell. Thank you for spending some time with us today, Joseph. Well, thank you for having me on, Henrik. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor for me. Excellent. It's great to have you here. You know, I first heard you on uh, Dreamland uh, last fall, I think it was. Uh, yeah, was, uh, Whitley Strieber, that's right. That's right, yes. I was fascinated by your research and your material, and I myself have been very into the whole uh, Nazi connection to both the occult, but uh, also the, the kind of technological developments, everything from right. rockets to the alleged at least flying saucers, etc. So this is going to be fascinating to talk more about this today. And what I would like to do uh, to, begi- to begin today, to kick things off, uh, so for our listeners who might not have heard about you before, maybe we can get, you know, a little bit on your background and, you know, when you first maybe began, you know, to take an interest in uh, World War II and, of course, the Nazi history itself and, uh, you know, uh, how do you come onto this path, so, uh, so to speak? Well... My father was an engineer, so I always had kind of an interest in in engineering and and physics. Physics has always been a hobby of mine uh, since I was a boy. It's not actually what I've been formally academically trained in. Uh, That training was largely in in areas of of, uh, ancient church history and and theology, which of course exposed me to a lot of ancient texts. And uh, I began to notice very quickly when I studied those things that that there was a kind of a hidden physics implication to a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And that uh, it kind of coalesced in in recent years for me when uh, I read a book by Christopher Dunn called The Giza Power Plant, Mm -hmm. in which he takes an engineer's approach to kind of decipher the mystery of what the Great Pyramid was, and, and he came to the conclusion that it was a gigantic machine. And that kind of kicked off uh, things for me. I, I, I began to, to research uh, the pyramid and, and ancient texts and, and things of that sort. And, and as far as World War II goes, I, I have always been, uh, since, since boyhood, uh, fascinated with the military history of World War II. I, I used to play strategy games. I still do, as a matter of fact, but <laughs> kind of complex things. And, and I began to notice that... Uh, the tail end of World War II really, from a military standpoint, a, a, an operational standpoint, didn't really make much sense. Uh, you know, we had uh, the U.S. Third Army under General Patton mm. uh, racing just kind of hell-bent for leather, if I, I can use that language, <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, into southern Germany and on into central Czechoslovakia and into Prague and, and the environs around Prague. And that didn't make any sense to me uh, from a conventional point of view. Hmm. And then, of course, the the deployments on the German side were equally as mystifying. Uh, Hitler had deployed most of his remaining battle-worthy formations in front of the Silesian German city of of Breslau, which is now modern-day Wroclaw in Poland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was just a lot of things that kind of set me off on on figuring out what was going on (laughs) at the end of World War II. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It ultimately led me into into these areas that I explore in, in the two books. Mm, fascinating. So tell us a little bit about 
uh, Reich of the Black Sun. I mean, um, let's start with the, you know the Black Sun itself. I mean, a, a, any connection to the to the swastika there, the the Nazi banner? Sure, uh, of course there is. Uh, I have a uh, on the cover of the book. I reprint one of the uh, secret society logos, as it were, that uh, was used by the Tula Gesellschaft inside of Germany. Yeah, and that that. Uh, symbol on the cover of the book is actually a, a kind of a stylized representation of, of an ancient teaching called the Black Sun, which depending on uh, who you read, it's a, a source of illumination, but also in some versions of the story, it's kind of a, a hidden power source or something that lies at the center of, of our galaxy. So mm. there was a great deal of esoteric uh, influence behind the choice of the swastika and, and some of the other symbols used by the Nazis, as I'm sure you're aware. And yeah, that yeah. would be one of them. Yeah. Hmm. Um, any any connection in, in your research to, to uh, Saturn and the Saturnalian Brotherhood and so forth? Well, none that I have come across thus far. That's not you know, that's not to say that there isn't, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as well as I do in, in this field of research, the, the connections can can multiply like rabbits. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Oftentimes, oftentimes an individual researcher won't uncover things that others have, so yeah. I wouldn't rule it out. I, I'm just not familiar with it. So, um, I mean, in your research, I guess you follow a line in the the, the, the theme, you know, that, that there was a, a tremendous amount of occult activity within the SS and also within the real society, and as you mentioned, the, the Thule Gesellschaft, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the things I point out in, in both Reich of the Black Sun and in the SS Brotherhood of the Bell is that the SS, at its highest command levels of, of Obergruppenführer and Gruppenführer, in other words, SS generals, mm. uh, these men were more or less aware of Himmler's own obsession with the occult and were expected, in a certain sense, to uh, be initiated into it. Now, in the case of, of the topics I explore in the two books, the, the the SS general that I'm concerned with the most is a fellow by the name of Hans Kammler, mm, yeah. uh, who would have had the equivalent SS rank of, of a colonel general in, in the German Wehrmacht. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kammler is the man that, by the war's end, is heading up all, and I, I, I mean all, of Nazi Germany's secret weapons projects. And given that the SS does have this kind of hidden occult uh, agenda at work, uh, it would not surprise me that there is some connection between some of these projects that the Nazis are pursuing and, and various occult doctrines like the Black Sun. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we can kind of even see the swastika itself as kind of a very schematic or stylized way of representing a vortex. Mm -hmm. which, of course, is a, a key concept for some of the physics, I believe, that they were investigating. Oh, interesting. Uh, in regards to the Black Sun esoteric information, of course, do you think that there is a connection with uh, you know, Hindu mythology or something like that? Uh, I, I would suspect that there is, and I would suspect also that there is a very strong connection with ancient Sumerian and, and Babylonian mythology, because, mm -hmm. again, uh, Germany was of course, between the wars, uh, home of some of the world's premier Sumerologists and, and Assyriologists. So, uh, yes, it would not surprise me at all if, if there are all of these connections kind of playing in the background. Hmm. The difficulty has always been to, to find uh, exact or specific references in the literature that these things are at work. What we have to do is kind of conjecture on the basis of, of known uh, esoteric doctrines and then kind of connect the dots to some of the physics projects that they're, do, that they're involved in. Uh, so, so there isn't any clear, as you say, documented you know, information in regards to what the Nazis themselves might have, you know, why they chose to, to go with the Black right. Sun, I guess. Right. There, yeah. there isn't... A, there isn't a clear known documentary trail, but I should add an important point. Mm. Uh, the SS Occult uh, Investigative Bureau, it was called the Annenerbedienst, 
was set up by Reichsfuhrer Himmler precisely to investigate for the purposes of military exploitation mm -hmm. all areas and avenues of what we would consider the occult or, or the paranormal or, or the esoteric. Sure. So there does exist a large, large body of literature and documents from the Anan Arabidines, but they still remain more or less locked up in, in uh, American archives and, and the uh, Berlin Document Center in Germany and, and uh, elsewhere in Europe. And for the most part, they really have not been examined in any real scholarly detail, and, and hmm. this is the problem. Wh and why do you think that they kind of went into this direction? I mean, is, is it about... Uh, exploring all possible scenarios or, or means of, you know, acquiring different type of technology or weaponry. What, what's your take on it? Well, I think ultimately it is it is for the the acquisition of, of weaponry and and, and uh, of course extension of Nazi power. Uh, I think that that the impetus also comes to a certain extent from from Nazi ideology, and that in turn, of course, would trace back to some of these secret society connections that mm. uh, more or less helped the midwife, the Nazi party, into existence. Mm. Uh, again, the Tula Gesellschaft or, or the Vril Gesellschaft and, and some of these other secret societies in, yeah. in uh, the interwar period in Germany. So there is this impetus in occult literature and in occult doctrine, of course, to, to acquire power by... Uh, means otherwise not considered normal and hmm. in terms of the physics then i think that this means of course that the nazis would have prohibited the pursuit of anything relativistic as being kind of tainted with connections to to their arch enemies the, the jewish people mm -hmm. so i think they were thrown back by the nature of the case on the other types of physics that were being developed in the interwar period in inside of Germany, and that would have been quantum mechanics, first of all, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. and the other area that's not very well known, uh, and that would be vortex mechanics that would have been developed by people like uh, Professor Dr. Gerlach and uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Hilgenberg and, and some of their associates. Interesting, and uh, I just wanted to ask you there, do you think that there is any difference today in regards to how, you know, military actually, um, in what areas that they go with their research, considering, you know, that, that we have clear connections between the Nazis and the, the U.S. so forth, you know, obviously right. with the paperclip project and so on. Well, that's a, an excellent question, and it's one I, I really get into in both books, uh, particularly the SS Brotherhood of the Bell, mm -hmm. rather extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know you know, your European listeners may be unfamiliar with the story, but uh, the modern American CIA is really an outgrowth of, of the wartime American secret service called the OSS. Yeah, yeah. Now, interestingly enough, in 1944, the station chief, American station chief of the OSS in, in Zurich, Switzerland, was a fellow by the name of Alan Dulles. He's He's very well known in this country. I, I don't know how well known he would be in Europe. He's got an air but, force. Uh, pardon he, me. Yeah, he's got an air force base named after him, right? Yes, he yeah. has uh, an air force base, and, and uh, of course Dulles International Field outside of Washington D.C. is, mm. is named after him. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, he subsequently became a director of the CIA uh, in the '60s, and of course was fired by President Kennedy after the, the uh, botched Bay of Pigs invasion mm. in, in Cuba. Mm. But Dulles negotiated with a German general by the name of Reinhard Galen, oh. who commanded Germany's Fremdehere Ost, which was, of course, 